So another edition of the program, uh, if you are just joining us, this is Kuli Kuli Football, my name is Biodun. Don't, for, don't, so, uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to uh, follow us in all our handles on Facebook, on Twitter and you know, you can follow up, uh, you can follow us. Today I'm in the beautiful city of Vilbo, Vilbo. <laughs> in Denmark. In Denmark. <laughs> It's a very quiet. Uh, it's a very quiet, uh, <laughs> nice and stable uh, yeah, environment. I really yeah. like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a lot different from uh, when you go to Belgium, yeah, other European countries. That's so true. Scandinavia is a little more. That's quiet. that's why they are smaller in, in population. So that's that's, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, thanks so much once again. And in case uh, if you don't know uh, who I'm uh, next to, to next week today. A legend, Super Eagles legend, Paul Ikechuku Obiefule. <laughs> uh, I hope I pronounced that right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, try to get my statistics right. Some said you have uh, 10 caps for Super Eagles, some said 14 caps. How many caps did you have for Super Eagles? Uh, I, I have 14. 14 caps, okay. okay. Then the 14 is right. Yeah. So we, we go, let's start. Uh, let's start to give our viewers some stuff. Um, I'm going to ask you first, your best memories of Super Eagles moment. Which one till today, which memory do you still have till today? Of Super um, I think playing for Nigeria alone is a good memory. It's something that I will have for the rest of my life. You know, it's not everybody that have that opportunity. Um, it's a dream for every player, you know, to play that. And um, I did. And though it was not so long, but I enjoyed every moment. And um, I remember a game we played against uh, South Africa in Man Mandela Cup, I think 2005. Um, in Nigeria, in South, Africa, in South Africa. In South Africa. It was, it was really um, memorable because it was so much the population in the stadium was so filled up. And, um, and I was, um, I think it was only me. Um, I just moved to Europe nearly. And um, yeah, so we, it was an honor to play with um, the likes of. Um, Okocha, Kano, them, and then, you know, the game was really, really good. Um, we, we lost 2-1, but it was a very, very memorable game. And um, I think I had one of my best games also. And playing alongside, uh, playing against um, one of the, I think, midfielder that was uh, playing for Manchester United then, South Africa. Uh, Quentin Fortune. Quentin Fortune, yeah. yeah. So it was a really interesting. I think game. I remember that match. Yeah. And, uh, we had the uh, Ayo Daily Martin oh, was and uh, Martin, yeah, Martin. Yeah. So it was a great match. Was, so, nice. so those are your memories. All the all your oh, times. Of course, I, I played. I was in the Nations Cup in in, in Egypt, still in six. You know, even though I didn't play a game, but we won bronze. Um, it was it was a good memory. It was something that we we get something out of it. And um, having to, to to play and be in the camp with all the all the players, the players in Gavalawa, if I knew Daisy, Joseph Yogo, you know, it was really amazing time for me, you know. 
But if I may ask you, um, how did you break into the team? Uh, um, I don't. I think I, I play. I was playing in Hapland, you know where. And then I was invited by Christian Chukwu by for the to play the. Uh, they will call it the LG Cup. The, um, where would they use the home base players to do that? And then after the two games, I played. Um, I did well. They said. And then the following months, they were playing the Unity Cup in London with the A-team, with the Men's Eagles. So Christian Chico invited me and uh, Sandro to me was from players that came from the team that played the home base to join the, um, the professionals. So I went to London and played a game in the Unity Cup against Ireland at Jamaica. And again, I played both games and I did well. I think that was how I went and joined the team. And then I started playing the qualifying for the World Cup and the Nations Cup that we went to in Egypt. Yeah. Good, Chris Chuku was a little sick right now. Are you getting, do you get in touch with him? Yeah, I try to... Um, I, I always talk to him and I've been visiting him a few times when I went to Nigeria. But since he's been ill, I haven't reached him, you know, because there's been so much things surrounding him and the government and how they could get him to London. So I'm happy that he's getting the treatment yes, that, he's, uh, getting better. Yeah, that, he's, uh, that he needs. How, how, is it like, uh, in those, how was it like in those days, playing yeah. in Nigerian League? Atlanta, there are a lot of good clubs in those days. Do yeah. you think, uh, how, do you, can you compare the league we have now and in, in your time? How how is the feeling like playing in Atlanta and Nigeria like that? For me, it was it was great, you know. But I didn't have um, I only played Atlanta for four months. Okay. I could say I was um, one of the lucky ones. I could say I didn't say much um, because I was going to school. I was studying in Futo and I was playing in uh, Atlanta. And luckily for me, then they invited me for the uh, just three months, four months. They invited me. But then I think we have some the names and the people playing the league was a little bit like we um, it's heavy you know like you say this kind of name exactly. we look at uh, um, uh, then we used to watch uh, some of the big players you know what Friday or you who the players for Hatton for National and the players for Super Eagles. we have players want to go to Julius Bega we have uh, some Chijoke Jogu and some big players that is there so in general the league was so much um, the names, maybe I, I think it was because we had those names for growing up. So it was really nice. I think we have a, um, it was strong. I came, I played with Uzami Gwe, who was a one played for Indian band, he was a high school scorer in Hatland. And um, it was very competitive, I would say. Because you know? even if you look, uh, I think it was after that. Or maybe before or around that time when Eimba won the yeah. Cup Champions League, we have Vincent Ayama. Yeah, we have Vincent. From, I remember playing yeah, against Vincent. Yeah, Vincent Ayama. They are all playing Eimba. Yeah, yeah, they won there. Cup Champions, yeah. Cup Champions so, League. And now it's even difficult for Nigerian to team get to, the semi-final yeah, to get out of a group stage of capture. Yeah. So I think a lot has changed. And it has changed quite so. I think to the the. Maybe it has to do with the, the, the governors that took over, they are not so much interested in sports and they haven't really But, but have you given it a thought? Why can't we try to copy the kind of system? Where, why can't we fix uh, football as a... Why can't we do it like a business, you yeah, know? I remove think. government out of it? You know? yeah, but then it has to change the mindset of people. You just need somebody with the knowledge, with the experience, experience to say, to come in. Of course, that's why you have to also get team managers uh, that really have the experience, been in Europe and play football, you know, then to come and say to the government, okay, you can't do it alone, it's a gradual process. And then you have to also initiate to start to generate funds within the club using sponsorship, you know, making a sponsorship deal packages that we will. We have so much companies in Nigeria. We have so many companies. And in population, is and population there. is there. Yeah. So it's just that they we don't they haven't tapped into the system on how they could generate money apart from selling tickets. They they have to able to the the companies have to 
or is a responsibility that they have to do some social, uh, we'll say, corporate social responsibility to them. Exactly. So they can be able to fund and to do if they approach, but it has to be the right, it has to be something that creates value for them as well. Exactly. So we need to prepare a package that creates value for both for them and then for you. Exactly. So you, in, like in Europe, you have a package of brooms, you know, a package of people who can be there and then a package of people who can be in the sheds, exactly. you know, like that. And then, it's also to upgrade the stadium so that people can see the banners, the, the reclaimers, the adverts for the people paying you, you know. So in a way, the people can advertise whatever they're doing. So it's a more 50-50 way, but it's just to, uh, to create the concept that is missing, you know. So that's where they, I think that they need people with experience to be in the top, to, to be the team managers, you know, to bring, in, not just waiting for the government to bring money to if the governor don't bring money, the players won't be exactly. paid. They won't go to matches. Exactly. So they're still depending so much on the, on the state. Yeah. So I think that's why maybe we should come in in the near future to well, come. <laughs> we are waiting for that. You have to bring in your experience. Let's talk a little bit. Let's bring it back a little bit your background. You were born in Nowhere. You grew up in Nowhere, I think. If yeah. I'm right. Yeah. How was growing up like for you? Now, it was. It was quite normal. Like I have a, a loving family. We were large. We were born, I was born in a family of 10. And um, yeah, so my big brothers play football. And um, it was quite natural you know, to, to play football after school. And to, uh, so I played in Pepsi Academy as well in a way. Okay. You know, went a few times to the present in the state. And, yeah, so it was more like you know going to school, go secondary school, playing football, playing the academy in weekends, and then of course the interest was there. That was the main thing, you know. And then I started to play a little bit more in, in, in the competitions, you know. So I think uh, after the the big uh, uh, victory with Arugo FC Arugo, I think in '98 or '99. Um, then the next set, I joined the Rugo FC in a way. So I played uh, the season, but uh, then they won't finish it. Then I went to JC Raiders and Jaws. So it was the second division, and after the Premier, the second division. Um, I, I was there for one and a half year. You know, it was, we, we had a great team, we, we, we played. That was where more I started, to, you know, to come into more competitive football. So we played the league. And the first season it was we were one point from coming up to promotion. Um, then after that we, uh, yeah, the owner would we, we lose some of the players, the good players, and then the next season we struggled a little bit. And then uh, it was just you know in process of trying to you know fight myself and to see like how far you can go and how far you can push yourself. You know, do like do that. you at that time you know do you know you will make it? You know, no, actually I didn't know. Okay. I didn't know. I was just playing because of the interest you know and that I, I want to play and I think I'm good and I, I, I'm just um, I tried it. I went from away to just I have no family in just I lived in just for one and a half year. Uh, it was just the passion that I wanted to play football, you know. And then after Jaws, I came back to Owerri uh, because I got admission in football and my family was so much interested in education, you know, that has been the foundation, you know. So I had to leave the football to go back to school to, to continue. And then lucky enough for me again, when I went to school, I stopped playing for almost half a year and then I didn't play football. So I was just going to school. Then we have a long break in school. Then I still found myself again coming back to football to train. So it was then that I, I had to um, I had the opportunity to meet the coach um, for um, Hapland, Alfonso Dickey. So he saw me and he thought I was good and then he signed me up and promised to help me to, to combine both school and, and football. So which I'm still very grateful today that I have someone who where is it? Where is he now? Um, actually, I think, I don't know if he's coaching any team now, but he's still in Norway. Ah, okay. Yeah. okay. Well, uh, talking about coming to Europe, in fact, I actually thought you moved to L L L Oslo no, from no. Nigeria, but no, I think no, it I was, was actually I was, Vivo. I yeah. moved to, yeah. after I finished the LG Cup in London, Yeah. And so I came here, I came to to Viva on a trial for how did Viborg. how did that happen? the Viva they noticed you actually no there was an, there was an agent you know after we finished uh, the the first the LG Cup in Lagos 
you know, I did very well and then I had one agent that approached me and said he has a um, club in Denmark that I was looking for, that is interested in it. In the midfield and the striker, and we were to work with Ozamigui. So he, he, he was like, I said, okay, you know, I give it a try, and they arranged for it. And after the game, we came here. Um, yeah, so I was here for, for three days, four days. And then they, they liked me, and they think I was good. Um, yeah, and then we agreed and, on, on, the, on the contract. But unfortunately, they didn't take my friend Ozama, so Ozama had to leave. Uh, and then I had to go to the Unity Cup in London. So what I did was I went to London, and then from there I went to Nigeria for the qualifying games. So the VBAC team came to Nigeria, they sent people to Nigeria. So actually I signed my contract in Nigeria because then they thought there has to be more competition, you know, because I started to play more games and other teams started to come. So actually it was how I... Wow. Yeah. So anyway, VBO kickstarts everything. Yeah. Let's talk about Limnos now. You you did well there over there. Yeah. But I think before then, it was a, it, it that was a club that already had a good yeah, history they had, uh, some with uh, young names. Well. Ezekiel have, Ballard, John Michael have, I think uh, they already yeah. left by the time you. No, I met went. I met Chinedu Abase. Ah, you met Obuke and then. Ezekiel Ballard. Mm -hmm. And I think it was Mikhail that, that left. Okay. Uh, and then the uh, Emmanuel Saraki that went out. So, yeah. So I met with uh, Basi and uh, no, Buke, now Basi. Yeah. <laughs> I went with them. I played actually with them there for. But I want to talk about something very uh, significant as well. You actually made a uh, made history there. As the first black uh, <laughs> in Norwegian <laughs> league, so I am sitting with someone who have broken the record <laughs> in Norway. It's it's really it's really astron it's really it's really a big thing for yeah. me for um, for an African for a black player in the you know in Europe. Yeah. So you have that record, I think, uh, as the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to captain, captain the, the Premier League team in the it, Premier yeah. Division. How, how do how do you feel? How do you how do you feel? How, how, you know, Lane then was was very it was a big team and we have big players coming in and going out. So I was um, I came to Lane and after six months, Chinedu was left to Huffingham, and um, so I still have uh, Ezekiel Bala and um, I think um, I came in the middle of the season when they were playing. So it was a little bit hard for me to, to meet up, but then the next season was really good. I had a very good season, I had one of the best seasons in my career and then. And um, we, we, the team in general, we were playing good uh, and it was going well. And I think for me too, I was doing good, I was helping the team a lot. And um, after the one year, so I got extension, I was signed again to stay three years in the club. and. Um, yeah, it, it was really nice, you know, the, the, the timing I think was good, the people was nice and um, the coach I had hand in back, who was, uh, played for Manchester City and Manchester United, I think so. He was a good coach and he, he helped me to, to like, you know, to push me to be able to... Did you win any trophy with him? No, I didn't win any trophy, but we were, we were, we had a good team, we had a good season, I can say, and, and the players was really nice. Uh, how will you? What do you notice as a difference? How will you, can you compare um, Norwegian football and Danish football? Uh, or you think it, they it, are it, is, it is similar, you know. It's similar foot, type of football, you know. But again, it depends on the people you have in your team as well. Sometimes it, it affects the whole system, you know. You know but I was um, lucky. The the coach I had was. Um, he also plays football, he not only does the long football, but he, he, he likes to put the ball down and play, and which was more my type of football, you know, than the long ball. So it was, um, but I had to work so hard because it's very, it's very hard, it's very competitive, it's very, you have to run a lot, it's, it's different, you know, from the, our type of football where it's more skillful, you know, this you have to push. So I had to be able to uh, to work so hard, train extra, um, to be able to uh, yeah to run. As a midfielder, you have to run front back, front back, you know, like that. So, but it helped me, you know. And again, we had a long preseason. You know, in Norwegian, we have 
from January to March wow. before the league starts in March. Wow. So we train a lot, we run a lot before the season. So uh, what, what, what was going uh, what was going on in the mind of the club at that time during because of the Mikel Obi saga? Or are they disappointed or feel betrayed or I don't think so because they, they, they were not um, they get they own part of the money they do, you know, they, they the problem was mainly between Chelsea and, and Manchester. Okay. You know, it doesn't, affect, it doesn't them. affect them okay. so much because it was just an individual decision Michael made made. And the Lynn was just happy to, to sold him to get the money and then to let him decide where he wants to go. And I think they sorted out in the end. And, uh, yeah. But Lynn has been a club that you know they, they know how to promote young players. And also how to, to, to sell your players. To, if you're good, then they sell you and then they, they make money and they bring new players. And I was there after one year and we bring Adioni Gallo as well. So we played in Lena Slow with me then, after Chinedu left. So we bring our uh, Gallo. And then, yeah. And then he moved and sold him again to Italy to Italy. So it was in that way that. Um, the process. The process. So tell us, uh, how's life after football now? It's different. <laughs> it's different. It's different. It's totally different. That's true. I, I can't will, believe I, I will advise, you know, like any player now, you know, if I have a chance to talk to them, like I will. When you play, you think you have five years, ten years, you know, like you, you don't bother about the future. You think there's time, you know, there's time. But there's no time. Mm. You have to start planning. You have to have a plan B, plan C. You have to think about, prepare yourself, like in the next five years, what am I going to do? Mm. How do I see myself in the next five years? Mm. Where will I want to be? Mm. And especially when you're an African player playing in Europe, mm. you, you need to see like, do I want to spend my life after football in Europe or do mm. I want to go back to Nigeria? Mm. You know, if you make that decision in time, it will help you to, to know where to invest and to know how to prepare for your future as well. Because mm. we don't have pension. So whatever you say, whatever you, you plan your life is what you would live after football. Mm. And, and football is just 15, 16 years, then you have so much, like your life starts already when you start football. Mm. And then it is important. It is diff it's, it's different now, you know, the, the type of lifestyle mm. is different. The income is not the same, so the lifestyle has to adjust. But it's difficult for people to adjust to that lifestyle because when you're used to that kind of lifestyle, and it's a bit difficult, it's a bit challenging for us. For I, most people. I think if, if uh, one is not careful, it can have a it can have psychological a mental, impact. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can be so much depressed that you you, know, you will even lose the little you have. Yeah. So it, it it's requires a lot of planning, planning, a lot of advice, and a lot of um, yeah. talking to people. You know, like the good people. You know, when you play football, you have so much people around you. Like That's they, true. your head is full that That's you true. can't think straight. That's true. And everybody wants something from you. Everybody wants something. True. So, but it's important to find the one or two people that can tell you the, mm. you know, to, to the strategy you can use, the investment plan that you can use. To, to, it's about deciding in time to what you want. Mm. If you want to walk, you know, you need to start to study to prepare yourself. If you want to live in Nigeria, it's fine. You want to start to do it. If you want to live in Europe, after then you start in time. So, but most of them, you just cut them on away. You know, the contract finished. Now, what to do? You know, then you start. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. Thank you, thank you for this timely advice, bro. I really appreciate it. So, as you are, you know, in case you're listening, from Hulsey's mouth, Paul Obiefuli, planning is very important. Life after football, you know, there is a lot of years ahead. So, um, during your active days, lot of, there were a lot of uh, rumors. Uh, some clubs were actually there was a time i think if yeah. i'm right that you almost made that transition to scotland or england mm -hmm. and do you want to <laughs> tell us about that or do you, are, uh, are you a little bit disappointed and, uh, and the injuries was, uh, yeah and, of course i was disappointed i think it was my after 2008 i had a very good season lane mm -hmm. which clubs uh, then particularly were looking uh, for it was uh, it was watford watford from yeah. england and um Aberdeen Aspen. in Scotland. Yeah. So I, I went to the the I think I can't remember or Mac Mac Macu or something, I can't remember his name, but he was the coach in Scotland. So he invited me over I was in Scotland to visit the team to Aberdeen to look around 
and then, but the problem was that when I finished the league in in November, I had a, an injury, a cartilage injury, that um, I thought it would be okay, so I didn't do the surgery. I went to holiday to so come back in January, still have the same issue. So and and Scotland was already half season; the league is on, and my league finished. So I had to join, jump to the league that is on already, and then I'm not ready with my name. And then the Watford was the same time, so that they want me in the league is still on. So and then I needed a time to see if I could get better, but they didn't have that uh, patience, you know, to wait. So it was at Watford and the uh, Aberdeen, and um, I went to Aberdeen though, and in the process of of talking to them both, and Aberdeen was really interested. They were waiting and they were waiting. But then they, um, I thought about it, and then um, they off, even offered me, you know, like to, to come and train and, and, and all that. So, but in the process, I have another team in Norway that Hannah Foster that came to the Premier League, okay. that made a good offer, and they were very interested, and then offered me another three-year contract. So in the end, and with the injury and the timing, and so I decided to, to stay in Norway. And to move to Hanna Post instead of those things. So it was um, it was a little, you know. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> it, it don't, the decisions comes. You need to make it fast, and sometimes mm -hmm. uh, it plays a big role to how far you can go, you know, and the decisions you make. So that's why it's important to, for people to play as especially to, you know, to evaluate the options, you know, not just football and money, but. You know how can it affect you? How can you develop more, or what is depending on the stage you are in your career? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I think that time it was really, and I was starting to have a family, so I was thinking too it could be uh, good to stay in Norway at that time. So, uh, so I stayed in Norway a little bit longer. Well, um, yeah. But uh, who, who was your role model uh, while you are doing your active? Is there any player you look? Uh, Particularly, like, well, I want to, you know, the model you're getting after. Um, actually, when I was very young, I was I look after to I look up to uh, Kano Wanko. Okay. You know, and because of him, I'm a big Arsenal fan. I love okay. all Arsenal. <laughs> and I had all my jerseys have been 25 because of Kano. Okay. You know? So it was more, you know, like that. Okay. And that I think time, it's it also is, from it's from a worry to worry from my city. I'm, yeah. I'm tall, and they say we play the kind of football. You know, but apart from that, I start playing the myth for the midfield. So, but there's few players like um, Steven Gerrard, you know, Lampard, and Xavi, and this is more like people that is very creative, not just midfielders, but the very you know skillful midfielders. So that was more the people that I, sometimes I watch the YouTube and just try to look at what they do uh, and how they you know orient, what they do in the field. You know, that's what the people that look up to much. But again, I also try to, you know, do it to, to follow my own footsteps, you know, to, to build confidence in me, to say that this is my style and this is how I want to play, you know. But of course, it's good to see those people, you know, try to see if you can learn one or two things from them. Exactly. Yeah. What is your hobby? How do you relax um, now? Um, um, what mostly, do you do uh, in your free time? I try to... I know you have a big, lovely, beautiful uh, family. Yeah, I try to relax with the family. <laughs> I try to read a little bit, okay. read some novels, you know, okay. the little things that is interested. And uh, so, um, listening to music is one way that, you know, relax, you know, especially having played football for years, you know, music is your company, is what you do. So, and, and that has been part of me, so... Music is what relaxes me, and you know, book music and just a book. Yeah. That is the way to. to well, relax. a little bit away from football, um, I'm gonna ask you if there is one thing, if you if you are given a chance to change one thing in Nigeria, what would that? What would that thing be? Oof. I think that would definitely to be to to make lights twenty four. <laughs> <laughs> To make lights. Because, because the Lord said, let there be light. Let there be light. And uh, if light is in Nigeria, I think that would be fine. That's true. I, yeah. think, I think so. So that's the only one thing, the only thing. you would like to change. Even the light will chase corruption. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> <laughs> well, rounding up now, uh, thanks so much, Paul and Beautifully. Uh, I still have a couple of uh, questions to ask you about. Uh, are we going to see you um, 
back around football administration or you know or business, football business? Or? I think definitely I would. I would love to do something with football. You know, I'm not sure yet, but I would, it would be something with administrative. You know, and um, also. Um, in the future, I'll try to get a coaching course and, and you know, just to, um, not, not necessarily, you know, to go to coaching, but just to have that, you know, but I would love to be uh, more in that administrative part, you know, with time, you know, to offer the help and the experience, and, you know, both in state and in national level in Nigeria, you know, but it's a great job process and now we just need to, you know, we are following also the, the, the things happening in Nigeria, the football, the NFF, and the, uh, so in my state as well. And so it's just um, trying to wait for the right time and also to to you know to get the to establish the network, you know, the contact that that was made, you know. So in future, I will like because to you've had the experience and um, you played to highest to the highest level, and you also you have. You have you live in a place that is football conscious with a lot of good facilities. So I think you have a lot to give back in terms of experience and mm -hmm. and if you want to go you know into that line, I don't think uh, it's a bad idea. It's uh, but you know you just have yeah. to make that decision and uh, yeah, because I see there's a lot of things to to do in especially in Nigerian football. There's a big gap you know from here and how exactly. the thing, especially how the thing is run and exactly. how it's managed exactly. and how to get the best out of players, you know, the players are, are, are badly treated, you know, because it is the players that is the key, you know, without the players there wouldn't be a team, there yes. wouldn't be an NFL, yes. you know? so it, it has to find the, what creates, what gives value for everybody, you know, so, and how to also um, grow as a, as a team, as a, as, a, as a state, you know, you know, going out from depending so much on the state to being a club that can be self, you know, funded and also um, give the players a sense of belonging, you know, that they they are doing something good uh, in a team that really appreciate them or uh, uh, motivates them. You know, there's so many things to do, but it's just a great job. You know, we will also um, get there. We'll and I wish you all the best, and that you will get there as well. <laughs> do you think? Do you really? Do you think? Uh, your boy will also play football? I think he will play football. Does he have the talent or he, he has. He, he's, <laughs> he's playing football. He has a game tomorrow with ah, his right. team. And um, he, he's, um, he will play football. I think my two sons will play football. Okay. Just, uh, <laughs> At what <laughs> position? <laughs> Is he also a midfielder like his dad? Yeah, now, now he hasn't really gone to the stage where he will choose. But he's playing, I think he will be more of a striker because he's strong, he runs and he scores goals. Okay. So uh, we'll see how far you know, <laughs> we, we talked about. You know, Is there any other thing you want to share with viewers? Is there any project you're working on? Is there anything you would like your fans to know before you say final goodbye to them? Is there anything um, you want or is there anything you want to share with Nigerians? No, actually, what, um, what, um, the, I stopped um, the past few years now, I've been after starting football and went back to, to school, you know, to get my degree and to get a bachelor's degree and um, I think it was um, something that have helped me, you know, also to find a balance, also to um, to continue to live at that football. So I think what I would say is more like an advice, more to the young players and you know, people that is still in playing football, that has, um, you know, that they should think about the future. They should plan about the future. It's never too late, to, you know, to get an education, to get a. a, a um, a course, you know, to get a program, to get something that you will be able to um, build on to after football. So it's just to um, uh, to know exactly what you want to do, where you want to be, and start in time to do that. Because it will help you so much, because time goes so fast. Yeah. Before you know it, something happens in football. Yeah, sure. So you need to be ready. So it's important that you're ready to, so you don't get um, it caught up. Yeah, or exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that is bad when you, you feel that you, you're not ready. That's true. And that something happens, then yeah. there's no way to, to handle it. You, know, you find people start struggling and start saying, like, uh, we have this uh, kind of, uh, uh, what do you call, that uh, footballers, uh, once they finish, that they start begging for money and all that. 
So, but it's just to, to prepare, the world has changed. You know, we're global now, there's network, there's internet, you can sit at home, you can get a degree, you can yes. do so many things now. And it's just to be able to plan. I think that's what I want to say. And it's, it's, it's very, very important these days. Once again, thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, bringing me to your city for opening your doors. I really appreciate this. Thank you so much. So you, we, you have been hearing from Paul Ikechuku Obiefule, Super Eagles um, International, Lynn Oslo Noel, Vilbok of uh, Denmark. You also play other yeah, you know, other club. Very strong in Norway. Lee Strong in Norway. 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 With Nosai I gave uh, Playing in Finland as so well, we played the UEFA Cup so with, uh, uh, with the trial, um, what is it called again? Uh, Bosa Sport. Bos Bosa Sport. So he yeah. uh, has seen it all. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I didn't go out from Scandinavian. Scandinavian loves you yeah. and you <laughs> love Scandinavia. Well, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Just uh, kindly greet your. Uh, fans yeah. back home. If you can do it in Igbo language, I will appreciate. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. Oh man. my god! Oh, my. I still have a pigeon. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> or pigeon, or you know, Igbo. We have to be proud of where oh, we are coming from. Of course, my, my kids speak Igbo now. Oh, yes. yes. Igbo, I have to learn. I have to know where they come from. It's okay. important. You know? So, can you greet us in your mother language? And all right, my people, and they all know Anna Meke living in Ahambu Paul, Ikejuku, beautifully. And Edwin Nademak. So, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much.